Worship, worship, worship. 
worship, 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 worship,
lifted up a praise and things started moving. Things started changing. Situations started bending for my good. The one thing the devil is after is after your praise because he knows that's what can defeat him. Though you slay me, I will still bless the Lord. Come on, somebody bless the Lord.
God. Can you hear me? Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can you hear me? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, Father, right now in the name of your son, Jesus, God, I ask that you would continue to have your presence in this building, God. Father, the word that you've given me, God, I would ask that you would bless it and make it meat, milk, and nourishment for your people. Father, we need you more now than we ever needed you. So God, I'm asking that you show yourself Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, our victory banner. In the name of Jesus. Father, in this time where men and women are walking away from you. Father, we turn towards you with uplifted hands and say all that you have for us. We lay down our lives to receive in the name of Jesus. For we know, for we know God, it is you that fights for us in this new season where we're rooted and grounded in you where we're rooted and grounded in faith in Jesus name we pray amen thank you God don't go nowhere yet don't go nowhere yet don't go nowhere. I'm not sure if I want to hear another song or not yet I'm getting a download I don't know about these braids, y'all. I'm just going to tell y'all. This, this, I don't know if this is working or not. Patting my head. Get it together. God, have your way. Come on, worship. Just, just, just for a few moments, just let us worship. Just folks, worship. God. 
Amen. Can we give God a hand praise? Let me get the preliminaries out the way. I really don't plan to be before y'all long. I know I say that every Sunday, but I mean it when I say it. Amen. Take your seats. Amen. I need y'all to pray for me because I have so many different ways. And I'm just going to be honest. I have so many different ways I want to start this sermon. And I think Sister Martin has heard them all. Do what? That's the best way to go. All right. I got it. Let's start this way. How many of you know that you cannot effectively play a game unless you understand all the rules? I have a cousin, and her name is, her name is Moneta. And we used to love to play Monopoly together, but I used to always cheat. Now, see, do you know why you're laughing? Because half of y'all was cheating when you was playing Monopoly. You know you can't put no money under, go par- under, under free parking. But you know the one game that everybody cheats in? Uno. Nobody, nobody knows. Listen to me. Nobody knows the real way to play Uno. So if, if, I, if, if you come over my house, guess what? We're going to play what? My way. You go to Jerry's house, we're going to play what? Jerry's way. But we may institute a few of what? My rules. Sometimes when you're playing Uno, it's great. Do you know why? You're winning. And you love it when the other person got what? A handful of cards. And what makes it even better, where's win at? Okay, okay. What makes it even better, Win, is when, the, when you got those really big cards and they hide behind all them cards and you're sitting back laughing. Do you know why? Because you're winning. Do you know another thing that we call it, that we don't really call it a game, but we play it without knowing the rules? Christianity and life. We'll make up our own rules in a minute. And guess what we'll do? When we make up our rules, we will call our rules truth. And I know and I understand. We'll say, I know God and I understand God, but I just made up rules. Just like last week. One of the things I told you last week was the fact that the Bible says this. It says that God would fight for us. But what do we say? Me. It didn't say me. Because how many times have we heard that we can speak things into existence? Have we not heard that? Have we not said that? Have we not said, God, I love you. And because I love you, I know that you've allowed me to speak those things, which be not as what? Though they were. Do you know the word of God does not say that? The word of God says God is the God that speaks what? Those things which what? Be not as what? So they were. But scripture tells me life and death is in the power of what? So if life and death is in the power of the tongue, the only thing that I can speak are the things that God has already spoken to existence. So therefore, so therefore, Therefore, if I speak anything out of his will, I've broken the rules. Tap a couple of people and say, stop breaking the rules. Stop. Because sometimes the problem is. It's not that we don't have deliverance. It's not that God can't bring deliverance. It's the fact that we're not speaking what he's speaking. Because understand this, in you and I, there is no power. None. In you and I, 
Now watch this. Now watch this. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I prove my theology? Let there be life. What happened? Ain't no power in that. The only power that happens is when I tap into God's program. If I don't tap into God's program, guess what? There's nothing there regardless of how I feel, regardless of what I say, regardless of how many times I fast, how many times I stomp my foot on the ground, no matter how much I wait. If it's not in God's program, guess what? It is not going to happen. Because you know what you and I have to do? We have to profess what God has already ordained. Yeah, we have to profess. I know we don't like that. We have to profess what God has what? Already ordained. So when we don't profess what God has already ordained, we operate in a self-righteous spirit and no one can speak to us. Do you know why? Because I know the Lord. Oh, I like that. That's a whole sermon right there. Do you? Now watch this. Do you know the Lord when somebody cuts you off while you're driving? Do you know the Lord when he's told you no? no? Do you know the Lord when he hasn't said a word to you? Do you? I'm with you. Can I have that? Thank you, God. Because I want to tell you, as we stand before you today, there's something burning. There should be something burning in all of our spirits. A revelation is as deep as scripture and directly points us to kingdom. Because everything isn't pointing us to kingdom. A lot of stuff is pointing us to what we want. So let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. When God chose Moses, right, did he ask Moses what he wanted? When God began to choose the prophets, did he ever ask the prophet, do you, do you, do you want to be a prophet? But sometimes the problem is we're professing the wrong things and that that we're professing and guess what? We start to trust it. And we'll throw a couple of scriptures on top of it and then try to try to believe it. And God's saying, that's not what I have for who? You. Now, I'm going to say this. And do you know why almost every Sunday I talk about TikTok and Facebook? Somebody said, every Sunday, Bishop, talk about TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. It's because y'all keep asking me questions about TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. That's why, that's why I address it. And I address it because TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube is a platform that anybody can profess what they trust and believe in. And we're the crazy ones for believing in it. Are there some good things on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube? There are. There's some good cooking shows. <laughs> There's some good cooking shows. If you want to learn how to dress, you can, you can, you can watch Liz's show on, on there. I think, I think Jerry, got, J- Jerry does taxes, so you can watch Jerry's show and do taxes. But stop getting theology from people who are not responsible for what you're supposed to be professing. Ah. All right, now watch this. How many of you were ever 16 years old? How many of you were 15 years old? When, you're, when your 15 or 16-year-old friend told you something and you knew it was wrong but it sounded good, didn't you want to participate? You knew it was wrong. But what was the one thing you want to do? I want to be a part of that. And then you got in trouble. You're like, why did I make this decision? Everything you want to be a part of and everything, yeah, I'm going to tell it. Everything you want to be, <laughs> everything you want to be a part of and everything you want to do, this sounds fun, 
Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop professing. Stop trusting. Because let me tell you what. My, my daughter, how many of y'all know my daughter, Taisha? My daughter, Taisha, Taisha was a really good girl. She is. She's a really good girl. But when she was in middle school, Jerry, she had this friend. And Taisha was the brain, and the friend was the execution. <laughs> Taisha would say, throw that pair down the hallway. And this girl that Taisha was with would throw the pair down the hallway. Go over there and hit so-and-so in the head. You know what this girl would do? Whatever Taisha would come up with, whatever she would speak into existence, Demisha would do it. So I found out years later that the little girl I told my daughter to stay away from has now become a member. And you know how I like to prove my theology? This was Demisha's theology. Demisha told Taisha, whatever you want to do, I'll do it for you because you got two parents at home. You go home, you're going to get a whooping. I'm going home, ain't nobody going to whoop me, so we're we going to make this thing happen. Stop listening to foolishness. We need you too. We got Demisha's. I want you to understand this. There's power in the words that you and I speak. There's power in the words that you and I speak. Because in Proverbs 18 and 21, it says life and death is in the power of profession. Grab that. Now, the Bible actually says life and death is in the power of the tongue. But I wanted to add profession. So whatever you are professing, that's where your life and your death, and that's where life and death exist. So let me tell y'all this. If I start talking about mom, and I start talking negative to her, guess what all the atmosphere is going to do? It's going to be negative on her, and she's going to be sad, and she's going to feel heavy. She's going to feel weighted down. Why? Because I'm over here talking, what, bad about her, and then I'm going to come in and try to give her a hug in the middle of Bible study. I'm going to go to work, talk bad about my wife the whole time I'm at work. Then I'm going to walk in the house and want to give her a kiss and wonder why she don't want to give me a kiss back. <laughs> Profession. What are you professing? <laughs> Life and death. Good. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You talk, we talk about our jobs so horrible, but every Friday, every Thursday, whenever you get paid, we take that check how? Nicely. And wonder why they didn't give us what? Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Wait, 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 wait. Don't nobody want a little bit more on their check? I do. I love my bonuses. I don't, I don't even got to deserve them. Just give them to me. Favor ain't fair. <laughs> you can see there's a principle in the kingdom of God, a principle of old. This principle is as old as time itself. However, it is, is that it is as refreshing as the morning dew. It is a principle that has power, that shifts atmospheres, that breaks chains, that ushers in waves of glory, or... It can be a crippling cane that caused us to move very, very slowly. And it is all in what we profess. Half of it is in what we see. So everything that you say, I want you to know what happens is when we begin to speak the same thing that happens in the book of Genesis to where God spoke life into existence, we begin to speak what? Very lives into existence because Everything is listening to what you have to say. Everything is listening to what you have to say. I'm going to say it again. Everything is listening 
to what you have to say. Watch this. The Bible tells us that. The sons of God came and they presented themselves to God. And when they presented themselves to God, you find that there was the enemy there. And God said, now see, I, I understand how we, how we like to look at this, how God threw Job onto the enemy. But understand this, the enemy already had an inventory of Job's works. He said, have not that considered our servant Job? He said, I have. He said, but you have a hedge around him. Meaning I've already taken the inventory. So therefore, I considered everything that Job has said to you. And then if you look at the enemy's testimony, he said, but you've got a hedge around Job. Because the only thing that the enemy could do, he could only understand the relationship between God and Job based off of what? His perspective. He knew, he, knew nothing, he knew nothing about love. The only thing the enemy knew or understood was a one-sided relationship. So he said, the only reason Job serves you is because you protect him. He doesn't know love. He doesn't understand love. He couldn't even, even profess anything about love. So here he is, and he's professing something that's only built in him because you know what? That's what he does. So one of the things about our society today is the fact that the only thing most people, not nobody in here, the only thing most people want to do is I want to know what you can do for who? Me. Our society is built not on reciprocity. It's not built on reciprocity. It's built on how, how can I benefit from having a relationship with you? I'm not giving back. The only thing I want to do is take. The only thing the enemy wants to do is take. He wants to take your peace. He wants to take your joy. He wants to destroy your marriage. And he takes it based off of what? Your profession. Takes it based on your profession. So his profession about Job, listen to this. What he professed about Job is the fact that the only reason he serves you is because of this, because he doesn't understand love. He was playing by what? Different rules. Thank you, God. I know what I, you know what I, know what I'm gonna tell y'all. God said, "Be what?" That's why that's a bite out of the apple. It wasn't an apple; it just said a fruit. So if it says a fruit, it could have been an apple. <laughs> so, 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 so here the enemy is, and sometimes the only thing we know is our experience. We have to stop operating based off our experience. Our experience is good, but we have to start operating based off of our experience and begin to start operating in our faith. Faith. We have to operate according to faith. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, faith is a substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things what? So if I haven't seen it, I can't what? I, can't, I, don't, know if, I don't know if it's going to happen. We have too many Christians operating on what mama did, what they think, how they see it. Do you realize that if we only operate by what we see, by what we know in our experience, we will never step out and see a different facet of God? We'll never, we'll never. We'll never step out and see a different facet of God. We will only see a different facet of God when we change our what? Profession. Because many of you have called me and y'all said, Bishop, I got a question. What is the first thing I say? I hope I got an answer. Because I don't know everything. And I tell you quick. And they say, oh, you know. I, say, I don't know if I know. We're going to figure it out in a minute. I don't. Because some things I need God to give me according to my faith in him. 
according to the things that I see. Because sometimes the things that you see help you build your what? Faith. Sometimes the things that you go through help you build who you are spiritually. But if you don't go through nothing, watch this. Let me me prove my theology real quick. Dr. Parham, you the same woman you were three years ago after going through all that with the salad station. Aren't your prayers different? Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Now, the, the, the Dr. Parham that was before could get a prayer through. But this Dr. Parham that we are experiencing right now, she knows how to tarry. Now watch this. She knows how to tarry, go through some labor pains, and pull something out of the spirit other people told her she couldn't have, and she refused to give up. Refuse. Some of y'all have given up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on your healing. I'm going to say it like this. Don't give up on your healing. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your church. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on yourself. I'm almost about to close. I'm going to do this real quick. In the book of Deuteronomy, the third chapter, 21st verse, and the 14th through 24, it says this. We're going to read verse 21. And it says, I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thine eyes have seen all the Lord God have done unto the two kings. What does it say? And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thine eyes have what? Seen some. A little bit. Where my Moses at? Where Moses at? Come on, Moses. He the only one with the beard. Now, I know I got beard in. If you had to cut mine off, I was trying to shape it up. All right. So, okay, stand right here for me. Right here. So. When we begin to think about this thing, we're talking about profession, right? Who was with, who was with Moses in Egypt? Aaron. Where's my Aaron at? Where's Aaron at? Where's Aaron at? Y'all know Aaron was cool because Moses really didn't say a whole lot. So now, 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 I want y'all to get a picture of this. So you have Moses and you, and you have Aaron. No, you got you got. Where are you supposed to stand? Where are you supposed to stand? Where are you supposed to stand? Uh, this is how we're going to do this. Come on. Right. I need you like, yeah, that's right. You got to be okay. All right. So, so you have Moses and you have Aaron. So what is Moses and Aaron doing? They're making the profession of God where? In the face of Pharaoh. And everything, everything that God has told Moses, Moses got scared. Talk about he couldn't talk, so God gave him who? Aaron. So Aaron's doing all the talking, boy. I could have been a good Aaron. I could have been a good Aaron, because I can talk. But the one thing that I want y'all to see is the scripture that we just read. The scripture that we just read said, what happened? Joshua seen what? Come here. Why don't you stand there? Right here. And look up there. Sometimes God has people, all he wants you to do is see their victory. And, and, when, and when you see that victory, it will build your what? Your profession. It will build your profession. Because he said, he's seen it. He said, he's seen it all. So in my, in, in my I almost said my military, in my spiritual imagination, I believe everything that Moses and Aaron did, Joshua was like looking at it from afar off. Now, can I tell you how I believe he looked at it? Can I have all the men stand up? All right. 
This is how I believe. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Joshua was watching them the same way you watched your wife when you first seen her. Who is that? Come here, Liz. Liz, come here for a quick. Where Liz at? Come here, Liz. Walk over here for a moment. <laughs> he didn't even have to look. He said, it's already mine. It's already mine. He said, it's already mine. Look, daddy gonna look. <laughs> so, you can have a seat. So, so, so Joshua, he's right there and he's looking at everything because everything that he's experiencing is going to build his profession when he takes over. And guess what? And he had, he had, no, he had no promise. He had no promise that he was going to take over. But because he's seen everything, his faith was built up. Now, now watch this. Joshua went through the good and the bad. He went through the happy and the sad and didn't mind being used. He what? Did not mind being what? Used by God. Because when Moses chose him to go down and be with the spies, you know the one thing he didn't tell Moses? Let me pray about it. Well, you know I got to work late. I, I'm, I'm uh, well, well, Moses, I, 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 I can't go. We ain't got nobody to keep the kids. All the excuses that we give to the church, Joshua did not give. But guess what? Oh, we blessed and we hear from him. No, no, watch this, watch this. I got one more scripture, then we out of here. Y'all probably saying, Bishop, you have went off the chain. Yeah. I, got, I got to give y'all this scripture because this is what God gave me this week. Yes, Philippians. Oh, I can't find it. Philippians. Give me Philippians 1 and 6. And I want everybody to read this scripture all week long. I want y'all to read this. When, when you get up in the morning, throughout the middle of the day, because we need to change some of our professions of what we're professing and what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Being confident in this very thing, that he which have what? And watch this. You remember last week when I was talking about David and David was surrounded by what? The Philistines. And then God broke forth on the Philistines like Belprasium. Do you know why? God wasn't finished with David, even though the Philistines were. It's some people that were once in your life that thought you were disposable. They felt like you were disposable. But guess what God said? The work is only just beginning. Like when? Right now. He said, the work is just beginning right now. I'm not through. He said, I, I'm not through with you yet. I still need to work with you. There's still some good in you. And it says, being confident in this very thing. This, right, refers back to what? Confident. I had to, I had to check with the teacher real quick. <laughs> this refers back to what? Confident. Be, be, being, being, be, being confident in this. That he which hath what? God. See, some of y'all saying, well, God started this thing, but ain't nothing happening. You just at the beginning stages. Yeah. We're just at our beginning stages. But now the next thing we've got to do, we have to start professing until we reach maturity. We have to start professing until we reach maturity. This begin, which has begun a good work in you, will what? Perform. It, what? That good work until the day of what? 
You have a good work in you. And God says, he is going to perform it. Don't you try to perform it. All you got to do is what? Profess it. God will do the performing. He'll do it. I'm going to tell you all this, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to put my Bible down there. I'm going to take my phone and put it in my pocket. I'm going to have you all move that real quick. And some of y'all heard this story before. And that is, when Taisha, my daughter, was in there, about the sixth grade, she came to me, and I remember I was sitting on the couch because we was watching Gullah Gullah Island. Anybody remember Gullah Gullah Island? Say, that's, that's too young for some of y'all. We used, to watch, we, used to sit on the, we used to sit on the couch and watch Gullah Gullah Island. And she said, Daddy, I said, yes. She said, what I got to do to be a doctor? I didn't have any idea what that girl needed to do to be a doctor. So I said, baby, if you want to be a doctor, you got to get all A's in school. She said, is that all? I said, yeah, you. That's all you got to do. So Taisha went from being a C, B student to what? An all A student. And guess what she is today? A doctor. Because she would always tell everybody, when I grow up, I'm going to be a So you know what I did to facilitate that gift? I bought her a real stethoscope. And I bought her a jacket with Dr. Martin on it. So she walking around the house with this stethoscope and Dr. Martin, uh, Dr. Martin on. So what happened was I facilitated the vision. Sometimes, listen to me, when you really know what God is calling you into, you have to facilitate the vision. You got to do it. You got to facilitate it. And then, don't forget, you have to play by the rules. Quit, quit dropping two draw twos and two draw fours down, and God is only telling you to what? Forgive. Quit, quit going... Quit going to the scripture that says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. No, 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 no. God tells you to love your what? Enemy. What happened to that scripture? If you do me wrong, the one thing I got to do is keep on loving you. I have to. That, that's my responsibility. That is my profession. Your auntie didn't like your potato salad 18 years ago and you still mad at her. And she dead and gone. The great potato salad, <laughs> the great potato salad war. Now I got me a practice, silly, let me stop. Hey, put my scripture back up. Come on Tyrone, before you get fired. Being confident in this very thing, that he, I don't know why that ain't a capital H, but we're going to go with it. He, which have what? Has God begun a, a, a good work in anybody? Now, 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 I didn't say you didn't mess up. I didn't say you ain't made no mistakes. Has God begun a good work in anybody in here? If he has, stand to give him a hand praise. If he's begun it. It may not be a finished work, but it's begun it. Trust me. He's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. Tell somebody he's going to finish it. That's why the Philistines couldn't whoop David. Because God said, I've begun this thing, and I'm going to finish this thing. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to take my seat. My appointment is on the 18th. I don't think God is finished with me yet. I do not think God is finished with me yet. And 
And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this. And even if they tell me, yeah, 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 you got cancer again, guess what? I'm going to work until the end. I'm going to preach until I can't preach no more. Because that may be my finished work. You all pray my strength in the Lord. It ain't, it ain't. Said it ain't, it ain't. Okay, amen. I, I receive it. I receive it. And I'm going to tell you why, because everybody can't speak into my life. But she can. Can we give God a hand praise? Thank you, God. Amen. Can we, can, can we do this real quick? I have some uh, people that have heard of Gabe Mike. Can we give our Moses a hand praise for doing that coming up? Our Aaron and our Joshua. Thank you, Father. Amen. I want to say, I want, I want to thank God because my mother-in-law is here today. That means I get to cook for somebody who want to eat. My brother-in-law is in the back taking pictures. Anyone that desires prayer, we're going to ask that you please come. Anyone that desires prayer. 